Chapter 3, Visitors. Miss Winston's coming to live at our house, Lisbeth said proudly. Kirsten was walking to school with Lisbeth and Anna. Oh, no, she replied. It's an honor, Kirsten, Lisbeth said. We've never had a teacher live with us. But we didn't want Mr. Coogan, Anna added. She wrapped her shawl more tightly because the November days were turning colder. Kirsten's spirits sank. The best part of the school day was when she, she left Powder's Curb School and headed home. If Miss Winston came to Lisbeth and came to Lisbeth's and Anna's, it would be as though school followed her home. But Anna was so excited she skipped. Won't it be grand? Miss Winston will eat supper with us every night. She'll have a bed up in the loft near ours. Papa hung up a curtain to make her a little room. Lisbeth laced her her arm through Kirsten. Miss Winston's been living in a shed off the Edinburgh's kitchen, but now the shed is too cold. She says our house will be wonderful. She's, she's heard our mama is a good cook. Well, there's no room for her in our cabin, Kirsten said firmly. Anyway, my mama doesn't speak any English at all. In the, in the chill air, her breath made little clouds at her lips. But that's the best part, Anna went on. You and your family will eat with us more often. Your mama will cook with mine and we'll ha all have supper together. That, that way, your mama and papa will learn more English. Papa says that that with Miss Winston at the table, it won't be polite to speak Swedish. Now Kirsten's spirits sank, sank even lower. The happiest time of her for her family was when they sat down together for supper. Papa talked about the crops and the animals. Mama spoke of the wool and wool she was knitting. She almost had enough to begin weaving. Lars and Peter joked about the pranks the boys played at recess. How could they speak of things if they struggled with English? And Kirsten didn't want to have school lessons at supper time, too. Would Miss Winston smack her ruler on Uncle Olaf's table as she did on the stove at school? When is she coming? Kirsten asked. Next Sunday, Lisbeth said. Quickly, Kirsten counted the days. This was t Tuesday, so there were only five more day nights of freedom left. Just think, Anna said. She'll dress right in our room. I bet she has pr beautiful petticoats. She's a lady, you know. Ladies wear beautiful underclothes. I'm sure of it, Kirsten scowled. Anna, I don't care what kind of underclothes Miss Winston wears. But when she saw Otter's low, lower lip tremble, she took her cousin's arm. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. You're probably cross. You're probably cross because you had such a hard time remembering your poem, Lisbeth said. That comment did not, that comment didn't make Kirsten feel any better. She put her hands to her, in her apron pocket where she kept the gifts Singing Bird had given her. That was the Indians, that was the Indian girl's name singing bird. She and Kirsten were already the best of friends. Every
every day they'd explore the woods and caves along the street. Singing Bird taught Kirsten to whistle like a meadow lark. When Kirsten was with Singing Bird, she felt as free as the rabbits they sc scattered as they 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 ran. ran that scattered as they ran. She felt as strong and as swift as the young deer they often kept came, that often came upon in the woods. She forgot to worry about trying to fit in at school, about trying to learn her lessons, about trying to speak English correctly. That that afternoon, there were long sh shadows under the pine pines when Kirsten ran to the stream in the bucket bump with the bucket bumping her legs. Singing Bird waited for her under the willow tree. Hello, Kirsten said. Singing Bird touched Kirsten's blonde hair, as she liked to do. Oh, she said. Kirsten beckoned for Singing Bird to, to follow her father into the woods. For several days, Kirsten had planned to take Singing Bird to the doll fort under the cherry tree. Elizabeth and Anna might be cross if Kirsten took someone into the fort without their permission, especially an Indian, but Kirsten had decided to take that chance. Singing Bird crawled behind Kirsten through the, through the tunnel into the fort. Red leaves carpeted the, the ground where the ground there. A raccoon peered at the girls from the lowest branch of the cherry tree. The yellowed grass inside of the fort was still thick, and all the doll furniture was there. Singing Bird's, Singing Bird's eyes grew wide when Kirsten showed her the sacks of doll cakes and cookies. Pretty, she said. She touched the three doll beds with of woven twigs, the doll blankets woven of cotton s scraps, and the little cross Lisbeth had made so they could pretend their dolls went to church. Kirsten had Kirsten took the tidy basket and the clay pot from her pocket. She put them on the table with the doll cakes. She pretended to drink from a little pot, then she offered it to Singing Bird. Singing Bird gathered a few bare twigs and tied them together at one end with a strand of grass. She set the twigs upright on the moss and wrapped a large oak leaf around them. Teepee, she told Kirsten. Then, then she walked her fingers onto the teepee. Come, she said. Kirsten laughed with ple pleasure. She put the small basket and pot into the teepee. Then she walked her fingers inside as Singing Bird, singing bird had done. Here I am, she said. Singing Bird shook her head. My teepee. She stood and stretched her arms wide to show Kirsten she spoke of a real teepee. Kirsten's heart sped up. Singing Bird wanted her to go to the Indian village. Kirsten knew that the Indian village was close by, but she didn't know where. Bar said he had seen teepees when he was out setting traps for rabbits, but none of the children at school had been there. Most of them did not trust Indians. Of course, they didn't know Singing Bird. Where is your teepee? Kirsten asked. S Singing Bird pointed toward the ridge where the sun, where the sun was setting. Yes, I'll come.
come, Kirsten said, but she knew that it would it was too late to go today. Every day the sun set earlier and the sky was already getting dark. So 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 she added, I'll come soon. Then she put the doll furniture back in place and Singing Bird untied the small teepee and scattered the twigs. They walked back to the stream together. Instead of drawing the setting sun as a promise to meet tomorrow, Singing Bird drew a full sun and pointed to the east. She meant for them to meet in the morning. Kirsten shook her head, then drew two suns, like Singing Bird's. She meant she couldn't come tomorrow, but she would be there the next day before she went to school. She would meet Singing Bird and go to her village. Kirsten didn't know how she'd get away, but she knew she would. Then, then as she could do so, then as she could do so easily, Singing Bird vanished into the shadowy grove and was gone.